mother regaled us with stories all through our childhood about Kildare and the, the country <coughs> life that she distinguished it from Dublin City where we grew up. And through my childhood, Bridget always stood out in all of the history classes, in our religious classes, and, and the, the rites of spring, the feast of Imbolc, resonated deeply within me. I never really knew why, in a childlike way, I accepted it. And I used to wonder why St. Patrick seemed to have a bit more of an edge than St. Bridget, but she was a feisty woman of the heart and the heart, and I just thought that, that was the way it was. Dolores has been on my radar for many, many years. Both of us. We, I, I have read her book. It's in the library of the Holistic Centre, myself and my husband, uh, Ron in Dublin. And it wasn't actually until this time last year when I am very honoured to be doing a, a Master's and PhD in All Hallows College. But part of my studies were to talk to people with rich in Celtic Christian spirituality and Catholic So after many years of this yeah. dance, yeah. we got to meet. And of course, in the great way of the St. Felicity that Anthony mentioned, the interview, which was meant to take 40 minutes, went on for three and a half hours. <laughs> and we discovered all sorts of wonderful connections. And I was greatly taken with the fact that Dolores said that her father had a shoe factory up in the Loud area. Cavan, there's Cavan. the shoes again. There's the shoes again, again. Yeah. yes. Because my grand aunt, whose name is Bridget, <laughs> had a shoe shop <laughs> in the <Dundalk. laughs> Now, she wasn't the same Bridget, but <laughs> she did Bridget. up with a bit of a shoe place. Oh, yeah, right? huge shoe. But uh, the fact that the three of us have this shoe connection, and here we know. are, And she said, there's this great fellow called Andy. 
recently walked the Camino. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> so again, there there was another connection. And in fact, that film was out, the one with Martin Sheen, that a lot of people saw mm-hmm. and could see the healing yeah. in the walking. Mm-hmm. That with each step, as we connect with sky and with earth, mm-hmm. that the healing comes. So we left Sally, having been on her land, and it really is very much we felt Bridget in her maiden form. There's a joyous young energy as you walk through her, her place, it's really stunning. And we came down to the Hill of Slain, and recently there was, um, uh, the local priest there has started a festival, a Paschal Fire Festival, I don't know if anybody was at it. But, but it was quite interesting that it was the same year, and I, I happened to be there. And we met Anthony for a cup of coffee, who was, again, very excited by the inspiration that we'd had. But it was when we came to the head of Tara that something extraordinary happened. We'd had the shoe connection. We'd had Sally's connection and Gay. But when we were in the coffee shop in Tara, there were two tables quite near us with Americans, because we could hear their accents. And we could hear their excitedness of being in Tara, walking the Irish land, and we just noted it quietly. And as we walked out of the coffee shop at Tara, there's a little barn that has just been um, rejigged, and it's a little holistic centre. And a woman came out called Sandra Phillips, and she was the resident holistic therapist at the time. And she knows me, and she came out, and she said, Karen, I've had the most extraordinary dream last night. May I share it with you? And I said, of course, this is my friend Dolores. And she said, well, it's a bit strange. I was on the hill of Tara in my dream. And she said, there was like an invisible door on the land. And on the other side of it was Michael Maguire, whose family had lived on the hill of Tara since the year dot. Maguire's coffee shop. Very nice job. And he handed her a Bridget's cross through this invisible door. And she looked at him and she said, huh? and he said, you must take this. And she took it through the door. And that was the end of her dream. But it was very, very vivid. So the next day when she arrived in Guars, she works there, she said to people, I know what a Bridget's cause is, but I don't really understand the full significance. And within seconds, she was surrounded by Michael's sisters, his daughter, people who work in the shop, people who were passionate about what Bridget's Cross signifies and how they weave it at Imbolg and how it's placed in the family home in a certain place. And she was... And as she saw her clients for the rest of the day, a word kept coming to her. Come in, though. Come, come in, oh. Come up. She, she didn't understand what it was, but she wrote it down. And when she explained it to somebody, they said, oh, is that that Camino? Camino de Santiago de Compostela, the famous walk that goes through the Pyrenees over to Spain. It's, it's very famous. And she goes, no, it's, it's, outside, it's, it's outside this door. It's, it's along here. Yeah. It doesn't matter. And Dolores and I stood with our mouths open. And we said, do you know why we're here today? She said, no. And I said, we're here. And we explained, because we're doing research, on this ancient Irish wall between Tottered and Mount and Kildare's monastic city. And I said, we were joking that the symbol of the Camino is a, is a scallop shell. I'm sure some of you have seen it. Yeah. And we were saying, well, the obvious symbol of this is a Bridget's Cross. Yeah. And we were excited, thinking, wow, imagine the communities of all these picturesque villages. Yes. Now, if you picked villages in Ireland to walk through, you could not do better than this. And we were imagining the families at him, but weaving the crosses and putting them in their windows to show that they're Bridget's way friendly, so to speak. Come and stay in our b and come and eat in our restaurant, come and talk to our historical society. And as we drove from Tara and we arrived in the car, and a fox ran across our path. Right. <laughs> and he said, Thank you, Bridget. Thank you. And then we arrived mm. at Bill and Mary and Rita's wonderful, wonderful home, sanctuary. And we were like weary pilgrims coming in mm. to the warmth 
and that strong heart energy that is theirs. And you. That we are merely small grains of sand in the great walkway that is Bridget's way. Mm. And she has called us, all of us. Mm. And when we started walking, I saw the many people that delight me when I walk in the garden well, when I see primary school teachers with all the little ones, mm. and maybe I see some of the travelling community, and I see older people, and I, I see people of the Catholic faith, people of no faith, maybe there's Druids or Pagans or everybody, mm. tourists. Mm. But by the time we'd finished, I saw people from around the world. Mm. So, we're here today at the start of a great adventure. The, the energy and the sense of new beginning and the vision that comes with Bridges Way is immense. I, I don't think we even understand it. But all I know is that the three of us are honoured to meet the three of you to be part of something great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.